Welcome back, everyone. It's been quite a week for us. Uh, uh, Legend seems to be groaning and moaning in pain. How about you, Leo? Uh, that says everything I needed to hear. <laughs> oh, god dang it. So, and that's my week in a nutshell. How have you guys been doing? I've been doing faring better. Um, just my... Just this one class that's just really a pain in the ass to lecture, but otherwise I've actually been a bit more productive. Uh, Dark Souls been doing some uh, Sly Cooper, not so uh, a little bit of Pokemon, not too much Bloodborne. Uh, eagerly awaiting the release of Fallout Four. When is that coming out? Uh, November eleventh or something like that. Let me check. It's supposed seriously to be... already. Yeah, it, it, they said in November. Yeah, they, they said it was going to be released the same year. Holy shit. You guys didn't realize that? Well, I've been kind of living inside of well, my I mean, books like, right for a while, I so... I said that you wouldn't know, but Zero? I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize it. Usually when I see stuff at EA and stuff uh, like that, I keep expecting... It's the 10th. It comes out on a Tuesday. Hmm. Hmm. That and I've been more preoccupied with waiting for my pre-order of Tales of Zestiria to come out. Which is coming out in a few days prior to this post to posting this podcast. Excellent. So, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm eagerly awaiting that. Uh, found out some more details about Dark Souls Three. Looking to get uh, the PS4 version of Dark Souls Two because that one is the one that has a lot of the uh, that has a lot of the uh, the updates to the changes as well as enemy placement. Yeah, I wonder. Legend, if we ever decide to do a Let's Play of it, should we do uh, the PS4 version, or should we use my Xbox 360 version? You need, to, you need to use the PS4 version, and I'll tell you why. The main reason for doing the PS4 version is because, number one, you don't you don't get the new equipment if you don't use the PS4 version. Okay. And number two, the PS4 version revamps um, enemy placement. So, like, for example, the Hide Knights are placed more often and have better drop rates. Ooh. And some of the more annoying aspects of the game, which were kind of broken, get uh, retweaked. Okay. So, like, in one of the areas later on in the uh, Shaded Woods, there's a giant fucking basilisk that's a bitch to take on if you actually want to do it uh, close quarters. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that bastard. Yeah, in, uh, in the new game... In the uh, in, in Skull of the First Sin edition, he's replaced, and a treasure chest of very rare gear shows up in its place. Ah, huh. so it's a very good trade-off. And there's some other things like they re, like they put instead of putting uh, Bengarl at the end of uh, the Bright Bright Cave Seldora, Dora right before the Primal Bonfire. Uh huh. I I think he's in the camp, or he's closer in the Shaded Woods. Okay, okay. So, so, so things are replaced and reworked to make more sense within the game world. All right, then. So, yeah, I might have to get the PS4 version. I, I highly would recommend that. I would like to get the PS4. Period. Right. If it's not become apparent, I'm still poor as fuck. Though, carrying drugs has become a thing more recently, so I'm back at work. Please, Claire, yeah, you're working for the Border Patrol. Clarify that. Why? I love making people think things out of context. <laughs> Not when they can get my ass arrested. <laughs> I am associated with someone who carries drugs in their cargo pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. I know it's for training sniffer dogs, but still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, as for me... uh. Well, both me and Legend had been dealing with midterms for the past two weeks. <laughs> and unlike them, I don't have midterms. I just have one big final that the final grade is based off of. Joy. <laughs> oh, that's well, that's a cool thing. No, you only isn't. need to worry about one thing. Yeah, except it's that the entire end of the exam, or at the entire end of the semester, and you otherwise have no clue. What the fuck's going 
Yay. Yep. And you have no idea what type of exam he's going to give you. Well, it's pretty much the same type of exam, it's just we don't know what the questions are. Eh, yeah. Let's see, what's been going on with me? Uh, besides midterms, I was playing a bit more Plague Knight. Oh, man. And You still need to beat that then, don't you, Senate? Yeah. And I'm playing a bit more Bloodborne. Still stuck in this one little area. I, I'm really going to enjoy fighting Mikola. I've seen some cosplayers of him online doing some funny sneak attacks, which is a thing. Uh, cage man. Yep. Ugh. Anyway, other than Bloodborne and uh, Plague Knight, I've been working on some stuff. Namely, I've been doing commissions, and I just finished creating the title and end card for me and Legend's latest Let's Play. Ah, uh, yes. So, as we mentioned before, we were talking about doing Golden Sun. Yes, that is still in the works, but we need to make a few more episodes of that before uh, we want to start pumping it out. Yeah, because it became immediately apparent after a few episodes, and I, I don't think this is really going to be too much spoilers. Yeah. But the thing is, we didn't take into account the sheer amount of exposition that they throw on your ass in the very opening of the game. And we decided to be numb nuts and do voice acting. We thought it was a good idea at the time. Two sore voices later. <laughs> yeah. And everything is sounding like someone smoked a million Marlboros. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, so... I'm beginning to wonder whether we should go through with it or not, so... Well, we'll give it some thought. I haven't made the full title card yet, and we don't have to commit to it just yet. However, we can go ahead and announce our next Let's Play. This one is coming out for sure, and... It's going to be coming out on Tuesday. Yes. We've been having a lot of fun with the recording, and it is... Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, the DLC... Joy! Yes, and uh, <laughs> I promise it's going to be a... It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. By the way, it's not, it's, it's kind of been fun doing your voices for uh, the characters, Leo. It's a wonderful thing to play as that character, isn't it? <laughs> King Knight or Squeaky Knight? Either or. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I've been having... A, Plague Knight is probably one of my favorite DLCs of all time. I'll say, so. you've been voice acting as Plague Knight, even when he's not voice acting any, even when he's not saying anything. It's just too much fun, dude. <laughs> I get wrapped up in the character. By the way, there is a lot more deaths in this in this playthrough than there was in Shovel Knight. Yeah, there are some points where I embarrass, I embarrass myself just flying off into a hole. <laughs> so... There will be a lot of epic fails, so it reminds me a lot of the Dark Souls Let's Play. <laughs> but less audio errors. Yay! Well, well, also, we got a new microphone. We can't seem to use it for the podcast at the moment. Uh, operator error. Either operator error or audacity or... F fuck if I know. I need to figure out how to work this thing better, but it works well when we're doing recordings of Let's Plays. So expect an audio up grade i hope hopefully the quality will sound a bit better do need to get a pop filter for it just in case but that's another thing for another time yeah so other than that not much has been going on for me besides exams and stuff like that but things are starting to cool down a little bit so oh another bit of an announcement for the channel as well creepypasta ain't happening unfortunately Things just are really, really tight-packed this year, so I, we're not going to be able to put up the podcast this year. You mean the creepy The creepy boss, excuse me. What we are going to try to do is a we're going to do a Halloween-style podcast in which we're going to have Leo, Legend, myself, and hopefully we can somehow nab a Kari onto it. I would say, why not? Why make it just four? Let's nab as many people as we can. Make it a big old clusterfuck of people. Well... I've been trying to, but someone is online, so I can introduce them to the fifth person. Well, you catch me on and off, because, again, half of my life is now stuck inside a book. Eh, that's true. So, when we do see that your Skype button is green, 
We're putting you. We're pulling you into the Skype chat so you can meet Muzi. <laughs> By the way, she's just as bad as Leo, if not worse. Oh, that's a good thing to look forward to. <laughs> well, at least you'll be inoculated to the bullshit. I've been inoculated to a bullshit for a long time. I don't think so. Time. You get surprised by a couple of things she says, and I'm me. <laughs> so, good luck with that. Looking forward to it. Talk to you soon, Muzi. Okay, so we have his consent. Leo, keep it. We have his consent. <laughs> it sounds like you're dragging me into something inappropriate. No, I'm making you sign a blood Typically contract. It is. I'm making you sign a contract in your own blood. I haven't slept for the last two weeks. I would do anything at this point, I think. Oh my. <laughs> Even say shit like that. Oh, god damn it. All right, enough shenanigans. Let's get on to more shenanigans with the actual news of the week. So what shenanigans do we shenanigate? Okay, first off, some Cerebi news. Hoopa starts coming out, finally. Oh, no, we're finally unleashing the beast. You can and say he's being unbound. Yes. No, he's yeah. And, you know, I don't know how many hoops you're going to have to jump through in order to get this creature. Well... Put a ring on it. Yeah. So yeah, it for really now, gets around. God damn it, you two! Anyway, Hoopa comes out. The, and you it, appreciate it, the circumference of the matter? God damn it! <laughs> Hoopa is out in Europe at the moment. It will be coming out in the U.S. pretty soon. Can I get a freaking word in you, numb nuts? Well, we le wanted to let you get around to it. <laughs> Where's my screen pillow? <laughs> Uh, you can go ahead and take some orbit on that. <laughs> I'm good. Moving on. Alright. Uh, Alright, so... Next on our list of bullshit is Shiny Xerneas, Eveltal, and an event Zygarde are coming out pretty soon. Why in the world? We're finally getting Shinies! I know a certain someone who's going to be ecstatic to hear this. Hmm. Oh boy. So, Leo, what can you tell us about the stats of these fellas? What, the actual, the actual um, event Pokemon? What they have? Yeah. Uh, nothing too special outside of the fact that Xerneas and Yveltal will be coming out as Shinies. Uh, it, it is important to note that there is a delay. Uh, Xerneas comes out on the 29th, two days before Halloween. Um, Yveltal comes out on the 5th of November. And... Uh, Zygarde comes out on the 12th of November. But all three of these Pokemon are supposed to be at level 100. Damn it. Um, well, that's not a big deal nowadays because you can have the secret training, the, the super the training Pokemon trainer to do it. So that doesn't actually bother us anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, Xerneas comes with Geomancy, Moonblast, Aromatherapy, and Focus Blast. Eh, all right, Bill. I'm not sure about Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy well, can be useful again, as a Again, you can still retrain the moves with with hard scale, so it's not not a big deal. Yeah. Zyther comes with, uh, sorry, Yveltal comes with Oblivion Wing, Sector Punch, Dark Pulse, and Foul Play. So all dark and, moves. And uh, Zygarde comes with Lands Wrath, Extreme Speed, Glare, and Outrage. Which makes it arguably more interesting, but I would honestly get rid of his signature move and throw in an Earthquake. Yeah, because Lanthrath is basically Earthquake, but shittier. Yeah. Well, we don't know whether or not it might get buffed if it goes into its next, and if it goes into its full move and shows off its full power. And if it doesn't, it will be a classic Game Freak being an idiot. Yep. And I'm basically betting on that. Ugh, God dang it. Al always a being such a positive person today, aren't you, Legend? I haven't been positive in two weeks. Maybe we should give you a charge for that. Clear! I am sorry for doing that. Please don't kill me. Oh no, not the stair. Not the stair. Ah. Anyway. It's a good thing that I'm not there for this audio joke. <laughs> it's not audio, that's the thing. It's a sight gag for an audio recording. Mm. Because we haven't done enough of those, have we? Alright, moving on to more Nintendo and Google. And the Pokemon Company. And what the hell? And mobile apps. Yep. Uh, all, all three of the collective companies, Nintendo, Google, and the Pokemon Company, have invested $20 million into the Pokemon Go app. 
20 million dollars. You might as well raise the pinky to your mouth as you say it. I already 20 have. 20 million. Okay, so this is officially going to be a... What is it, a franchise? It, no, we already got the Pokemon franchise. It's, it's a, going to be a big effing deal. Big freaking worldwide app. I mean, if Google is behind this... Oh, boy. You can expect a lot of crazy shenanigans to happen. Exactly. Ah, oh, man. I, I don't know whether or not to be excited about this. On the one hand, it's more Pokemon. On the other, it's Google. Hmm. It's an app. It's an app. There's an app for it. There's an app for it now. Hmm. So... Think of it. Really, we don't know too much about it yet. I'd like to see what happens when it actually comes out and how much you're going to have to pay out for it. Mm. If it's a $20 million investment, I expect that they want to return. Yeah. Okay, so what else we got on our plates? Well, looks like we got ourselves another douchebag of the week. Video game style. I don't know whether to call the officers on this one or to call it on the dude who got away with this take it away leo so from south korea a thief goes undetected for two years using the solid snake trick that is a cardboard box i do not know how to fail at cop <laughs> i do not know whether or not to applaud this gentleman for his audacious and idiotically simple means of embezzling millions of dollars, or to slap the police officers for fucking up here. Um, bit of both, maybe? Bit of both, yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. So... It's amazing, isn't it? What would you get away with if you had a cardboard box and this guy's luck? <laughs> Why do I picture Leo just sneaking into the girls' uh, dressing room? No. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I've never done that. Quit trying to get me in trouble, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you, man. Relax. Yes, I know. Please don't get me in trouble. I'm not going to. I'll testify to your moral fiber. Alright. Yep. How how, depending on how much my, wor my word is worth. All right, so um, all right, so that's that. They eventually did catch him, and who knows how much he's gonna pay pay for his crimes? But dear God, the fact that he went two years without being caught. I wonder if people will study this case in uh, police academies and go, "This is how we don't fuck up anymore." <laughs> what the hell? All right, okay. From one douchebag to another douchebag, this time it's company, this time it's Ubisoft. What did they do? What did they do this time, you mean? Yeah. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little bit of, uh, little Might and Magic. Okay, so if you don't know, Might and Magic is like a really, really old gaming series of, uh, Ubisofts. Uh, I've never played it myself. Uh, you told me a bit more about this, Leo. What's, what's it more about again? It's final. It's Age of Empires with more fantasy elements, but this is the this, the franchise itself isn't the point. Here is the point: uh, the special edition was released uh, recently on uh, to people, and the idea was that many of them were supposed to go ahead and receive physical discs For the... uh, along with their collector's editions. However, they did not get these discs, so somebody fucked up. Yeah, so initially, the deal was that uh, Ubisoft was saying tough luck and there wasn't going to be a, um, there wasn't going to be a, uh, and, and there was supposed not to be no discs, no returns, no nothing. However, quickly, very quickly, Ubisoft changed their tune. Hmm, yeah, I can uh, wonder why. Yeah, can you smell the, hmm, what's that smell like? It smells like a lawsuit. Well, eventually they started to apologize for the goof up. And offer anyone who wanted a full the full refund or a video, a full refund and a video game <laughs> of their choice. Mm. Nice. So go for like the newest ones. It's like worth sixty bucks. Well, they they have a specific list. Oh, of course, a specific list. Right. Because mm. if it were me, I'd be saying, "Hey, give me this game." 
That's two hundred dollar worth. That's a two hundred dollar value gain. Give me it. I'm not sure Ubisoft actually has any two hundred dollar games. I'm talking about the whole DLC, the whole big packs that they sometimes have. You know, with all the art books and stuff uh, like that. One of those. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now there's more uh, video game uh, shenanigans around. With oh. the voice actors, actually. Yeah, apparently we've got uh, the very beginnings of, well, a voice actor, a video game voice actor union. Yeah, mainly because from what I've gathered from this news article, vo voice actors in video games are treated like shit. Yep, and apparently the dog is biting back. They're on strike. Like over 95% of the actual video game voice acting community is on strike. So that means we're going so that means from now until whenever the strike ends, you're going to have games that are going to have voice acting from people within the company. Voice within acting from hell. Voice <laughs> oh god. All the voice actors from right to hell. <laughs> you know it's voice actors from hell? Yeah, voice actors from hell. Yeah, or Larry from the uh, cubicle to the right. Larry is unfortunately one of the voice actors who was on strike. Therefore, we're going to have to get Harry, his cousin, who doesn't even work in the same building. And has laryngitis. Yes. We're off to a fantastic start, aren't we? Fan-fucking-tastic. But at the very least, we won't have to get him from the union. Yeah. I have to ask you guys a question. Because the thought has been murdering me in silence. Oh, man. Why don't we just cut to the chase, shall we? It, it, this thing, this, it, it, this, uh, this occurrence is so bad, it is serial. Yeah. Will you get to the bloody point already? <laughs> bloody <laughs> indeed. Friday the 13th. I think this is going to be brilliant. If they do it right, this will be absolutely brilliant. So, from what I gleaned from it, it's basically one person plays Freddy, everyone else plays campers. You mean Jason. J I'm sorry. One person plays teenagers, the other person plays campers. Wait, you just said teenagers and campers. I know, I'm making a joke at, zero, at zero's expense. God damn it, anyway, Leo. Anyway, Randy <laughs> Greenback and Gun Media are going to go ahead and, and make, are making this Friday the 13th the game. They, they are looking, they are at a, a little bit over four, uh, four, $400,000 into their $7,000 goal, and they have 27 days to make that goal. Huh. So, as the game the game is itself very basic. Uh, the idea is that one person is Freddy and that the other seven are campers. And from what we, from what I saw, basically, the ga there's no time limit, and the game ends when either uh, Jason kills everyone or the campers manage to escape. So, pretty much the epitome of a good horror movie. Yeah, uh, one of the main. One of the main cornerstones to the game is a fear system. Like amnesia? Which, which works very much like amnesia, in which the more scared you get, the more crazy things look. Ooh. So you might see multiple uh, Jasons. Or you might see things that do not exist. <laughs> oh, that'd be perfect. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's, it's all in your head. Oh, shit, it's not! Sounds like the insight meter for Bloodborne. It sounds like a fan friggin' tastic time. Uh, they they are, they are actually getting um, a Sean uh, Sean Cunningham, the creator of the Friday Friday the Thirteenth video uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth movie, uh, on the uh, as part of their uh, executive team. Holy shit! That's probably a smart move when you want to make a video game that's tied to a movie. They also yeah. got one of the Jason. They also got one of the Jason actors, Kane Hodder, to go ahead and do a mocap and stunt coordination. Oh, well, we have, if anything, it'll look very similar to the movies. Yeah, but don't Harry expect any voice Manfredini, acting. Harry Manfredini, 
who was not only the composer for the original Friday the 13th, but also composed Swamp Thing and The Hills Have Eyes 2. So he's got a few uh, horror soundtracks under his belt. Correct. So <laughs> we, are, we, are, we do have an extensive team of people. So to keep in mind, I never was a fan of the Friday the 13th uh, series. I did see a few of the movies. And it, they seemed all right. <laughs> but from what I can tell, this game might actually be pretty good. Right. Uh, so, naturally, the actual game plays, so it's supposed to play like the movie. So it actually occurs in Camp uh, Crystal Lake. All right. Or, yeah, Camp Crystal Lake. But power-ups and other equipment will be randomly scattered every time you play. So, that umbrella you could use to stab uh, Jason in the eye and uh, run away will not necessarily be there the first time, the second time that you run to that spot. Correct. It's also, uh, uh, what was Instead, you just might find things? a lantern. Yeah, also, um, we already mentioned that, that, the, that the, it ends either when Jason kills everyone or when someone escapes, right? Right. Right. Okay, very good. Uh, one of the things to note about this campaign is they actually don't tell you what the the extended rewards are. Huh. Hmm. They, they, they will go ahead and re reveal what they are as soon as they start making their goals. Interesting. So, but based on the uh, amounts that, that are blurred out, the highest possible reward appears to be at about... Four and a quarter, four and a quarter, four and a half million dollars. Huh, that's a pretty uh, lofty goal. Don't know right, if it'll reach it. That, that's like the penultimate one. A majority of the more realistic ones go to the one million to two million dollar range. Well, I could see that happening. I mean, ukulele did pretty well. Yeah. Right, so we'll see how it goes. All right then. So we've got a few things of uh, creepiness. Uh, on our list of news, starting off with a bit of a hint from the Five Nights at Freddy's master, Scott Cawthorn. Cawthorn. And he's giving us a little hint about what to expect in Halloween, which is to say... Nightmare Spring Trap. Mm-hmm. Clickety-clack, Spring Trap is back. <laughs> That's a nice little thing. Yep. Yeah. But don't keep me rhyming. All right, let's... <laughs> yeah, I, we have no idea what to expect. We don't know if it's a difficulty upgrade, if it's a uh, completely new layout. A new night. Or whatever it is. Odds are it probably will be a new night. <laughs> Something to add to the 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. We have a lot of 20s. Yeah, just I think it's just 20 all. I think the short version is just 20 all. And we also do have additional confirmation. This is, in fact, the final franchise. Uh, well, this is the final Freddy in the franchise for the main series. Yeah. So don't expect additional answers <laughs> if you've still got questions. So the image of, uh, of this creature, whatever it will be called, it's titled In the Dark. In, in the, the Dark. dark. Because I know every single time there's a screen capture on Scott Cawth Cawthorn's website, there's always a hidden message when you boost the bloom on it. Well, I don't know about the message when you boost the bloom, but there's also been messages within the actual name of the picture itself. Yeah, there's that. Just looking at the code for the page itself, just looking at everything. Right. He, he always puts like these Easter eggs in that. One thing I will applaud Cawthorn for doing is... He, he does know how to uh, tease his, uh, his fans and is actually pretty good at hiding Easter eggs. In fact, a few, gamer, few uh, game developers I know have been getting really good at that. Like Mr. Toby Fox of Undertale. Oh, man. Toby. Holy crap. He is even... He, how can I put this? There's so much hidden stuff within the data of the actual game that you could practically make another game with it and dissect an entire story from it. All of which deserves major applause. If you haven't gotten this game yet, then 
What are you waiting for? <laughs> it's only 10 bucks. Yeah. All right, then. So I with... don't doubt that there's going to be a sale when it comes to... Um... When it comes to uh, the winter sale this year. Yeah. When will that start? I guess that'll be in December, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, then. So, next on our list. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ooh, this one's actually got me a bit interested. Uh, Allison Road. Uh, it, it was on Kickstarter, but now it's not. Okay, Allison Road, uh, for the uninformed... It was basically supposed to be the spiritual successor to the PT that I believe Konami keeps shutting down. Yeah, yep. uh, fuck Konami, by the way. We haven't said fuck that Konami. Yeah, I I believe we need our quota is about uh, seven fuck Konamis an episode. Something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, these guys picked up the torch and started making a game on Kickstarter until something incredible happened. It got, got picked up by a, by a developer. Team 17, who, if you're familiar with the with following ukulele, is also helping Platonic Games with their game. Yeah, Sorry. so we've got, a, we've got developers now looking into Kickstarter events and picking up the tab where the backers fail. Yeah, because from what I heard, uh, Allison Rose Kickstarter wasn't going to meet its goal in time, or I th it might have. We don't. We wouldn't. We don't know. In some <laughs> parallel universe, it happened. <laughs> but either but then way, again, in some parallel universe, Konami's not an asshole. Right. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, we've now got publishers looking into these Kickstarter events, and possibly. Well, picking up the baton there. Yeah, I can see that. And the only thing that kind of irks me a little bit is that the people who did donate to the uh, Kickstarter if will not get their goals met, get their uh, goal uh, treats basically. Hmm. You know, like yeah, with ukulele, at the same time, they're not going to lose their money, so it's not it's it's a trade off. It, yeah, it's a trade-off. I'm willing to bet some people will be miffed, like saying, "Oh man, now I won't get the free game." Some some slight miffness, but uh, not not a total loss. True. If the game's going to come out, it's probably going to be really good with the with the backer help. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like Ukulele, it got it went way past its uh, Kickstarter, exactly. yeah. and it's even got help from Team Seventeen as well. So, not to mention the fact that every single person on Playtonic Games is a rare veteran. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that one. When is that one coming out? Next October. Next October. So, I gotta wait a year. Yep. I paid 50 bucks for that thing. I am gonna get the game. I am gonna get an art book. I am gonna get a strategy guide. Are we gonna get, get a Let's Play? Get all the things. Yes. Get we all are, the things. We're gonna get all the things and we're gonna do a Let's Play of it as soon as I beat it and 100% it. Or we could do a blind run. Have fun with that. How many people do you think will be doing that on YouTube? Oh, I don't know. Everyone and their grandma? Cutie oh, Pie and Markiplier and everyone else? Well, we'll see. So, what is next? Uh, oh, well, we were I was talking about Bloodborne a little while ago, but of course, Bloodborne's going to be getting its Game of the Year edition. Which is basically the Prepare to Die edition for us veteran Bloodborne players, which I am not. You're, or just veteran Souls players from Soft fans. <laughs> From Softians. Lovecraft. Softians. Soulsians. Soulsians. <laughs> I like it. A soul society. <laughs> that's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> that thing in, in Yu Gi Oh? No, that's Bleach. Oh, Bleach. There you go. <laughs> You're awful, man. I haven't even seen Bleach in a long time. You Holy have crap. DVDs of it. Yeah. Back when it was good. It was good? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, during like the first uh, arc with Rukia. Yeah. And that's it. Right, so there right was when it was nice and simple. Yeah, everything was nice and simple, and we didn't have a crossbreed as our main character. And we didn't have fan fiction going off, off out, of, uh, out of the auteur's uh, yeah. hand. Um, yeah, all kinds of good shit. Uh, for a decade, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, Bloodborne getting Game of the Year edition, aka it's getting uh, the version with the 
Old Hunters DLC. In other words, again, this is a Prepare to Die edition. Yep. Which, uh, man, I'm going to have to chill out 20 bucks for the, uh, for that. But or it will be worth it. Yeah, it will be worth it. I'm just going to be nervous about having to pay for it online, but, eh, what can you do? You could buy it in person. That would be me rebuying the entire game of Bloodborne. So what are you complaining about? I have Bloodborne, you twit! Yes, okay. Let's run with this. Okay. I can't believe he's actually making this argument. <sighs> anyway. Moving on. Uh, Dark Souls 3 multiplayer details announced as well. Ah, uh, yes. And they've got some interesting lore tied... It's actually tying lore into the game mechanics again, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, so basically the way you enter into the multiplayer is you use something called an ember. Which is apparently a fragment of the original power of the Lord of Cinder, who, spoilers, is the final boss of the original Dark Souls 1. Yep. So how this is all going to work and play out, I'm still not 100% sure about. But from what I can tell, it's probably going to be something more akin to the original Dark Souls only with a lot more polish. Yeah, it's kind of like the humanity mechanic, only it's a one-time use as opposed to stacking on a bunch of humanity. Yeah, just shoving as much humanity as you can down your throat. There like you your go. like your fucking Lautrec. <laughs> AKA Senor Rape Face. Oh boy. You are saying Leo? Yeah, I, I was just saying, you know, you, you could decide not to let him out, or even better, you could kill him on the spot. That's true. Though, but then you wouldn't get his armor later on. But it really, it's not really worth it unless you use it for his armor, unless you're a collectible. Oh, and uh, not killing Lotrek means he steals her soul, he steals the Fire Keeper's soul, which you can get back, and you can restore her voice. No. Yeah. Right, but only, right, but that's that's um, but I mean that that's only for a change of effect, and even then she still kind of is very embarrassed about the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, creepily enough, you also get her clothes. Anyway, and yet she has her clothes back on. Okay, it's weird. You don't return them to her. Right. Anyway. Uh, let's move on to something else. Uh, uh, next on our list of notes... Shin Megami Tensei 4 Final is not a remake. Shin Megami Tensei 4 Final. So, a while ago, I played Shin Megami Tensei 4. I got, I got, I somehow got stuck on the lawful end, and I thought it was complete horseshit. I then finally managed to, through intense grinding and looking up a strategy guide get through the neutral ending, which I was meh about for the most part. It just meant you had to fight the lawful boss and the chaos boss, and that was pretty much it. Hmm. Not, nothing much after that, because then the game just ended. Huh. The, uh, the, uh, the rock dome over Tokyo was lifted and stuff like that, and jolly times were abound. Now they're making a... It's not a remake. It's a side story to Shin Megami Tensei 4, which, from the screen art and the trailer that I've seen, takes place either before our hero or slash villain, this, or whatever the hell our main character from the original Shin Megami Tensei 4 happens. And it takes place just in Tokyo instead of in Mikado. Hmm... So it seems to be interesting. One thing that kind of irritated me. One thing that kind of irritated me was that there was a ghost character that looked shockingly similar to an annoying twit in the first game named Navar, who's a complete, as I said before, twit and asshat. So that means he's back and possibly dead. And as a spirit, and oh my god, he won't be—he won't shut up. Oh god. 
So I, I honestly have no idea what to feel about Shin Megami Tensei 4. Uh, Leo, you're also a, a Mega Ten fan. What are your thoughts on this? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't really know. The Shin Megami Tensei 4 story had some very interesting I events, so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to help us. Oh, there is an image of him what he's supposed to look like in Final. Like the uh, the protagonist? No, what uh, Navarre looks like in Final. Yeah, that ghost little thing. Yeah, very interesting to see how that's going to work. Because the last I saw of Navarre in the first game, he was uh, found yeah. guilty of trying to Basically, kill off your character. Because he wanted to get some demon ass. No, he didn't want to get some... He wanted to hook up with the female character, Isabeau. Oh. I, th I, th I, thought he was the I thought he was the chaos hero. No, that's Walter. No, no that's not Walter. Yeah, that's Walter. Walter is the uh, short hair... Walter's the chaos hero? Walter was the chaos hero, and Jonathan was the curly-haired dude. Oh, okay. Navarre is the guy with the pompadour. Okay, I'm, I'm confusing Navarre and Walter. That's what's going on. Yeah. I have no idea what any of this is because I have not played the game. I could loan you my game. I'm good for now. Eh, it's a good... Uh, like, the battle mechanics of the game are spot on. Like, the battle mechanics are fluid, are fast-paced, and you can get through a battle quickly. But also, you can get screwed over easily if you don't know what the hell you're doing. Alright. As with any uh, Mega Ten game. Alright. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what to think about uh, SMT4 Final yet. Alright. Um, let's go ahead and move on then to um, some more demons in Yokai Watch. Hmm. Well. So, what do we want to watch out for? So, the Yokai Watch games are going to be a three-on-three -three battle system okay. with, a, with a rotating slider, which is somewhat reminiscent of uh, Jade Cocoon 2. For some reason, I'm also thinking about the, the DS Digimon games for some reason. Yeah, the, Digi the DS Digimon games have a similar system, although I think they use six party members. Uh... You have up to six party members, but you only have three on the uh, active at a time. Ah, well, there you go. Um, they ha they can go ahead, and, and they have regular attacks and sultimate attacks, which you go ahead and uh, wait. And did you what? say sultimate? That's the name of them, sultimate. 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 Okay, why don't we get this addressed, please? Yokai Watch is a pungent. Fantastic adventure! It's a pungent. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the, that's uh, what Leo's basement is called. <laughs> and he's locked you up there a few times. It's called punginging. <laughs> yes. I'm not. He I'm not hearing a denial. Yeah, they stink so, so much, I might even call them pungent. Oh. Well, the, the ultimate attacks are your DS, swipey swipe, tap, tap, go, boom moves. Yeah. And so so basically, all the touch screen comes from using your ultimate attacks. Oh, really? Yes. Um, you can go ahead, and there's also a capture mechanic where you can actually capture... And purify opposing uh, yokai to join your side. All right. Um, it's not entirely clear whether or not this is going to be. Uh, there is going to be bartering for uh, uh, to get them to join you, but it's not entirely clear whether or not the spirits evolve or if they are fused together, much like uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Yeah. So from what I've been getting, because in Shin Megami Tensei. You can either convince, bribe, or just sway uh, uh, a monster to join you. Hmm. Which always threw me off. I actually have a lot of difficulty getting into the Shin Megami Tensei series just because the different demons and the different way you interact with them. Oh, by the way, uh, trying to sway demons in Shin Megami Tensei 4, completely random. 
Which is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing I hate about that is it's completely random. Although sometimes if you kick the ass of a whole bunch of enemies at once, one will say, stop, stop, uh, do what, I'll do whatever you want. And then you, you can say, all right, you join me. And like, okay, oh wait, you're too low level for me. Get lost. No, so he, he finds you another person to join, another demon to join you. Oh, well, that works out. Consequently enough, um, if you do encounter him again and then talk to him immediately after and, like, you get the level up, he will go ahead and rejoin you. Yeah. And, of course, some weird things that should have got my tent say uh, for. Sometimes you can bl your allies will get blown away, and then you can re-encounter them in battles, and they'll rejoin you. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so, the... As far as the art design goes, it's actually pretty um, pretty decent. There's some very good cell shading going on. Level 5 does excellent work with that. Yeah, um, yeah level 5 is actually pretty damn good with what they do. One of the funnier things is how they, they go ahead and they have... It's, this is still a very Japanese game. In that as your character leaves the house, they immediately equip their shoes. Really? Yes, and then when you go ahead and you walk into the house, you take them off the front door. Huh. That's weird. That's so even cool. if they have very Americanized names, this is still America Japan. America, America, America Japan. Japan America. And America. America Chan. It basically the same universe as uh, freaking Phoenix Wright, where everything is is. It, where the entire game takes place in America, but they're using Jap uh, Japan's uh, Japan's legal system. Yeah, although you end up seeing a lot of Japanese shrines and stuff like that in the game. Stuff like that, yeah. So uh, the, the latest... encounter rates are it's kind of similar to um, to um, Shin Megami Tensei in that you can detect uh, you, 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 you the random encounters are detection. And there's a, a indicator in the top right that shows you where everything is, or how close you are to fighting a random encounter. Hmm. All right. And different de in the, and then different demons will do different effects. There's one called uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Dolorama, like uh, the Dharma dolls, but Dol Arma. Dol Arma. And, and it's a demon. And it's a demon that has a tendency to make people lazy. Ha 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 ha! Do we have the what was it, what was it called again? The Nura Region? The what? Uh, it's basically a uh, yokai that looks like an old man with an elongated head, and it sneaks into houses to drink people's tea. And when I, it's not, I doing... haven't seen it yet. The the ones that I have seen are um, no, there, there's some goat demons. There's Kappa. I've seen a uh, samurai cat, a literal samurai cat. There's one that looks like a lion. There looks like a lion demon. Uh, there's also a very unusual looking one that you'd swear passes off as a female muck, like a muck with very feminine eyes. What? Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one in the background of the image that uh, we saw while researching this, and I was saying, Ooh, Nintendo gonna sue someone? <laughs> I don't think Nintendo is the one who's wait, wait. going to do the suit. It'll Pokemon be... Company, I meant. Still, well, Nintendo, w well, either way, either one would work. True. But yeah, that's basically the gist of things. Alright then, so... I might be interested in getting the game. I'm kind of still on the fence about it. At least try it. There's uh, all sorts of... Th there, there's plenty of things you can go ahead and do. If there's a uh, demo for the game, I'll pick it up and take a look to see. Because, mm -hmm. keep in mind, I was also apprehensive about Bravely Default when it was first coming out. And now you and you love the game as all can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Bravely Second, come out faster. No, come out good. Please, come out as good, if not better, than the first one. I don't mind if you take your time, just make sure it's gold. I think it's already out in Japan. Yes, it is. 
Mm. Yes, it is. Well, if we're going ahead and saying please ship it over, I'm also going to say this. Please bring Monster Hunter Cross for the West. It's a good fucking game. Okay, I'm done with the right rant. All right, then. So it's now time for us to delve into the indie horror corner. Ah, yes. Starting off with Beginner's Guide. This is an interesting game from what I've heard, but I've only heard so much about who is making the game. Which is to say, if you've heard of and played the Stanley Parable, this is the same guy, and he's got a few new tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, so both me and Leo have actually watched playthroughs of The Beginner's Guide, and I'll just give a quick uh, plot synopsis for it. Basically, there's this person named Coda who was a game designer who would make these game levels and do all sorts of weird things involving stuff. And he would just make a game and throw it away. Make a game, throw it away. And this one guy is trying to archive and catalog all the games that Coda's made and try to show people his artistic genius, how great he was, how amazing of, an, of a game developer he was. And basically, you're put into all these different games to see what happens while the narrator is talking over, saying how great Coda is and all this stuff. <laughs> At first, it starts off very hipstery, but then it starts to develop, devolve into this, uh, a story involving a lot of feels and a lot of, oh, okay, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> and... From what I can say, uh, it's an alright game, but it reminds me a lot of the walking simulator games like uh, Dear Esther. Yeah, it's pretty much like that, but um, uh, I gotta say, it's very, it, it's definitely a, a for the feels game, so you guys should go ahead and take a look at this. Well, I've taken a look at it, now well, Legend mean, I, needs to. I'm talking to our viewers. Ah, sorry. They're... Okay, so, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the other game that I put on here, Indivisible. This one I have a lot more to say about. So, Indivisible is made by Lab Zero Studios, which are the same people who were behind the fantastic fighting game Skullgirls. And their art, artistic thumbprint is all over this game. It looked really nice. Yeah. And, and it is amazing. And it is just as action-packed, even though it is an RPG. It's an action-packed RPG. Sure. It's weird. It, the way the uh, exploring uh, areas felt, it felt like kind of Metroidvania. Yeah, Either it has Met a Metroidvania Metroidvania. Style it's a guy. It's a, a, I want to say cro uh, Project Cross Zone attack, attack system that feels much more spirited. Yeah. I'd also say there might be a little bit of Ninja Gaiden in there as well, with the way you can take out enemies like straight away. Like you can jump anywhere, strike an enemy, take it down, and you don't actually have to fight it. Though well, you can fight it. it. It's kind of like a. Um, I would say it's closer to Mario Brothers. Yeah, hmm. I could see that. It's the Paper Mario RPGs. If you were strong enough level to hit out the opponent uh, with your with uh, either the jump or the hammer smack, you wouldn't fight them. Yeah, I think that was involving a badge, if I recall. No, uh, no I think it, it was just, just playing uber yeah, level. High enough level, yeah. Yeah, you just run it. You just hop on them, and that would be it. it. Because you would do more than enough damage that would normally kill that enemy of that type. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love the fact that it actually the idea of being so overpowered that your mere presence is the equivalent of a bitch slap. Oh, wait, that, that's not Super Mario. That's Earthbound. They really? Did, they did that in Earthbound. I don't remember them doing that in uh, Paper Mario. They yeah, did... I think in one of the later Paper Marios, if you do that, you don't have to fight them. I don't remember that. It might be Super or something, but... It's definitely in Earthbound. I know if you're overpowered in Earthbound, the, the enemy you encounter an enemy and they just die and you win. <laughs> Either huh. way, what it all means for the game... The game is looks like it's really, really fun. It's got a lot of exploration elements. It's got a lot of fantastic character design. I love the artistic direction in here, and yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to playing it. Yeah, the trailer for the game certainly had me hooked. Uh, there is a demo out. 
Yeah, there is. A playable prototype, not a demo. It's a playable prototype. Playable prototype, excuse me. Yeah, so if you want to take a look at that, go take a look. And, hmm. Well, I guess that's it for the Indie Horror Corner, unless has anyone else been playing any other indie games they'd like to talk about? I'm oh, we have to... we have been playing an indie game, but we are but you guys are already going to do a let's play of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess I can go ahead and toss this into in the uh, in the indie horror corner because it is an update to the biggest indie horror of them all, which is Minecraft. Oh. And that's because they're going Da Vinci on on people's asses. Oh, really? What do you? Oh, you mean with the latest because one point nine update? Why now? You can fly now? Yeah, there's the... Fly now. Yeah, I forgot about this. In the uh, latest update in Minecraft, uh, for one of the uh, snapshots, they introduced something called Wings. I don't remember what they're called exactly. Uh, it's a weird name that's kind of similar to, like, Bug Wings, like the uh, covering over Bug Wings. But basically, with that, you can actually glide and fly around. Huh. <laughs> So you jump from a high place, and depending on how you're looking up and down, you fly at certain altitudes. Like, if you're looking down, you, you go down faster, but if you immediately look back up, you can probably swing back up. <laughs> uh, that sounds friggin' fantastic. So I can already imagine a few Minecraft maps are going to be built around that mechanic. Oh yeah, there's already people going ahead and starting to do, to do that. Yeah, and from what I hear, there's only one in the game so far, and you can only get it through the special hidden area inside the end. Uh, Legend isn't very familiar with Minecraft, so I'll just say this. The end is where the That end makes me sound like a criminal of the internet, of the Minecraft, uh, of the video game community. Yeah. I have not played Minecraft, therefore I must die. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a majority of people who would believe that, sir. <laughs> anyway I know of Minecraft I just choose not to play it the end is where the creatures known as the Endermen reside Altyra it's called Altyra oh that's the name of the item and the uh, the end is where the Enderman aka Slenderman lives oh joy and then there's a hidden area where you can go to where you can find these weird gro gro growing purple uh, structures and then you can find uh, basically a floating ship in the sky to find the uh, the uh, wings. Hmm. They also added uh, combat to the game as well, aka shields and dual wielding. If you want to live, don't dual wield. That that's my number one recommendation. Just don't. It's cool. It's flashy, but it's there's a reason why it's cool and flashy. It was originally used in you know medieval shows. Not battle. So, if you want to live, use a shield. No, that's Musashi Miyamoto. Even he didn't use it in battle. He just happened to whip it out whenever it was practical to do so. So, there must be situations that are practical for it, then. Yes, but they're a lot less numerous than just carrying something that can take a shot. Even something as small as a buckler will help. Yeah. So, yeah, word of advice to people who like the practice sword fighting if you want to get into an actual fight oh. run <laughs> oh, i just remembered something um one of the things i remember seeing from the dark souls uh three like little thing for multiplayer uh-huh normal shields can't parry anymore guys there's there's a specific type of shield that it'll have oh, like a little icon at the bottom that says it can be par it can be yeah yeah but, I, I think, but it specifically it did that specifically for the target shield and not for the the typical kite shield that's associated with medium shields now. Oh man! So, so which means you you will be trading defense if you want to parry people. That's a pity. One of my favorite things was just using the <laughs> using the shield. Fair, I think that's the reason why because the, because then it, then it, there is no point in going for the smaller shield outside of the frame data, which makes it easier. But if you are good at parrying, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the parrying is going to be... From what I've seen on how to parry in Dark Souls 3 from the mechanics, it seems... Like, the frames seem to be a lot similar to uh, Dark, the original Dark Souls. Yeah, like, they went back to Dark Souls 1 because the whole knockdown parry is bullshit. Yeah, in Dark Souls 2. 
Yeah, and also, of course, the uh, Bloodborne. Yeah, basically where you had to do a strong attack from the... Yeah, you have to do the riposte, and then you can do the attack. Or if you want to do a back attack, you got to do a strong attack, and then a normal attack from the back. To be fair, though, with Bloodborne, I can at least say that, that she, by that time in real history, shields were phased out because they couldn't block gunfire. Yeah. True. So, I mean, that's kind of... I, I can at least see where that's a realistic thing. All right. Still sucks. Look, if you want to go ahead and do fantasy, play any of the Dark Souls series. If you want to, if you want to do uh, occultist um, steampunk, occultist steampunk, Raven Lost guest environment, then then do uh, Bloodborne. Yeah. It's weird. Bloodborne actually feels like a Raven Loft campaign a little bit. Well, yeah, considering Only the fact that Only a lot that more blood soaked. Can't pretty much considering that the fi- that the later enemies just become fucking Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah, but at least in Bloodborne you can kill the the Cthulhu. Well, you join the Cthulhu at one point if you decide to be smart enough about it. Yeah. So, I mean, there you go. But I mean, and I think I, that's I think that's, but the... that's part of the reason why because you're becoming Cthulhu. <laughs> You're becoming a newborn Cthuloid little worm purple thingy. You become Abby in her in her original form. Aw. Oh boy. Alright, so with that, there's one last thing on our list. Mainly it has to do with something that was posted that I saw posted around on Tumblr. Uh, it has to deal with like the new Disney princess. Which is to say Nintendo is Nintendo. Going to Nintendo. Uh, excuse me. Disney. Disney. Excuse me. I, I'm used to think... I. It's kind of weird. I kind of equate Disney and Nintendo a little bit just because of the fact that they're both, you know, family-oriented. Giant family-oriented companies that have a secret dark side to them. What do you mean secret? <laughs> but anyway, the Disney princess. Uh, Moana. Yeah, she looked all right from what I could tell. Keep mm-hmm. in mind, I'm not a fan of Disney princess movies. You're not a fan of Disney to begin with. Yeah, especially since they started moving to just airing nothing but CG, uh, 3D animated movies, which really hurt my eyes. Well, some of them do have some very good, interesting uh, qualities. Well, I won't deny that Disney can pump out some really good movies. My problem is, is that for some reason, 3D animation always looks weird to me, and it also strains my eyes. Like, well, that's a personal thing. Yeah, that's my personal problem with it. Like, I when I watched Shrek as a kid, I got a headache bad. Uh, Toy Story. I would never watch Toy Story as a, as a kid, even though I had the video for it, because it always gave me a, a, a throbbing headache as well. All right. That and I found uh, all, the, all the animation back then that looked kind of creepy. Oh, yeah, because even the, hu- the humans look just as toy-like as the toys, so... Yeah, I agree with you. There was a lot of creepy stuff. Though, I gotta give Disney a lot of credit for coming up with some very good narratives through their Pixar movies. Eh, yeah. Except very for good. Cars. Cars actually had its own unique narrative, too, which I would actually argue for as opposed to against. Cars 2, on the other hand, you will catch me ranting a lot more about. <laughs> that when I do find bullshit. I won't say that there's no bullshit, but... What about the uh, spin-offs to those, like Planes, Fire, and Rescue? I think you're starting to see a whole new trail of bullshit being, being made out of other bullshit. Okay, the planes could have been a great... It could... I, I could see a good angle that they could have taken, like, you know, a sports thing, where rival planes go out and race around the world, and this one underdog comes up to them. But my biggest problem is what Disney did... That is so cliche that I absolutely despise it, and it actually is much, much less realistic. And that would be? The inclusion of a villain. Oh, really? Think about this. What if the movie never had a villain? Like, maybe you had antagonistic... Uh... And, it, and it was just pra- it, it was just tr- It was just plain people with plain problems. Just 
the race itself being the antagonist. Okay. And these planes go helping each other out as they go through it. And racing as competitors as opposed to running and get running with a vengeance. Uh, think about that. What if there was never a villain? That it was just a friendly handshake at the very end. Well, whatever the hell they're shaking at the end. But anyway, that's a rant for another day. Yeah. God, there could be a whole uh, video of us discussing the bullshit of Disney. Yeah, but I think we're coming up to the end of the podcast here. Yeah. All right, so you guys are doing that for the channel. Yeah, I'm you... going to invest in getting a better mic. Uh, anything else? Uh, so far for the channel, we're going to have... Uh, I don't remember if I recalled when I was updating Plague Night. If I did, I'll repeat it here. Uh, Plague Night will be starting to be posted next week. On Tuesday and on Thursday. Golden Sun, we're still going to figure out if we want to do that or not. Because, again, exposition hell. Yeah, I think that's a good... I th I'm actually starting to get apprehensive to that one as well. Because, uh... There's so, so it's, it's going to strain my voice. It's going to strain my voice. It's, we already kind of strain our voices uh, playing the characters of, uh, of uh, Shovel Knight. Mm -hmm. there, there are a couple but, of well, there are a couple of other games that we do have available as well and uh, courtesy of you Leo we also have access to the old timey games including some that have their own voice acting that are begging to be uh, stuck on the end of a harpoon right yeah. but um, I'm, hopefully you guys will be able to find something to use and I'm hoping that we'll be able to see some of the some of the more hilarious, hilarious games on the channel soon. Yeah, I've already got at least plans for two games from the PS2 era. One being Dark Cloud, because the voice acting in there is minimal, and, uh, well, there's no voice acting in uh, Dark, the original Dark Cloud, so we can do the voice acting, and it won't kill us. Right. And then the other one has horrendous voice acting and a game where I know you can rant for ages about the historical inaccuracies. Well, either historical inaccuracies or... Homages. Homages, which are actually very interesting. And I do want to try that one out. That's actually the one I'm thinking of. If that one's at the top of the games that I want to... Uh, Try to let stick them. a fork into. <laughs> so should we just call that Legend Hunter's Riff? Well, it's not a Legend Hunter's Riff. It would just be us playing a video game and riffing the entire damn way. <laughs> Which would be fun. Also, it's a pretty obscure PS2 game from what I hear, because uh, it came around the time of Kingdom Hearts. And that one took over. Yeah. Yep. It, it's also a square... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Leo. I was saying, but it's still good. Oh, it's still good. Like, the combat is great. Mm -hmm. And it's got some interesting qualities that I would love to see explored. Though it is a little tricky to get around. It's a little tricky to get around, and when, remember when we were doing a practice of it, we were having trouble doing the copy and mechanic. Are we already... Should we go ahead and just say... That we, yeah, uh, it's an obscure game done by Square Enix, of all things, known as Samurai Legend Musashi. And I want to play it so bad. Didn't I loan it to you and you couldn't get through it? I couldn't save. I couldn't figure out how to save. That was my problem. I think because you have to progress far enough to save. Yeah, you can only save in the certain in the uh, main hub area, hmm. and you never got to the main hub area. I would like to get to the main hub area. Actually, I did get to the main hub area, but I still could not figure out how to save. Ah. Anyway, um, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, all right. All right then. So this all is right. this is this Destiny. Is Leo Zero? Horse. Let's try that again, shall we? This is Leo Force. This is Death Zero. And this is Wake up! I think he deflated. Oh wait, wait, wait. what's up dudes? <laughs> oh god damn it. See you guys then. Later. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.